Hey, good morning to all of you. Pastor Mike here, uh, bringing you a message on this cold, snowy day in which we weren't able to gather together for worship. I pray that this time blesses you, and it is extremely strange to be doing this, uh, that is, recording this, and not to be sick as a dog, like last time. So, we'll give it a try and see where it goes. Before we get started, I hope that you all remember that this is week four of the No Complaint Challenge. I believe I hear cheering off in the distance. I just wanted to share a brief story with you that happened to me this week. I had to go to the dentist this week because I started having a problem with a tooth that turned out to be cracked. Of all the weeks that we've had so far, this is the week that I really, really wanted to complain the most. Um, my tooth was sore. It was hurting. Uh, I had to have a crown on one of my teeth last October, uh, another one in December. And when my tooth started hurting last Monday, I thought, surely you jest. I ended up going to the dentist this week, and at the dentist... I was not able to complain or even frown in the waiting room because several of our church members just happened to be in the waiting room with me. So it was hard for me to not act cheery and myself, even though my tooth was sore and I didn't know what was going to be the verdict when I went to see the dentist. Well, it turns out that I have a cracked tooth that is going to need yet another crown. I told my dentist, if I get any more crowns, people are going to have to bow to me as I walk by them on the street. Um, and as I left the dentist office and I got in the car, I thought to myself, as much as you want to complain, perhaps there's something that you can give thanks for. Well, that thought started me on this whole other line of thinking about all the things, all the reasons that I have to be thankful. First of all, that I have a great dentist. Uh, I get to see people that go to our church at the dentist. Uh, my dentist is a church member and a great church member, and we're thankful for that. I'm thankful that I have a great dentist. I'm thankful that I have dental insurance. There were years in my life that I did not have dental insurance. And even with what I'll have to pay for this crown, the fact that half of it's going to be paid by dental insurance is a blessing. Then I started to give thanks for my wife, Kim, who works so that we might have dental insurance. Uh, and then I'm thankful for the fact that because I went through Dave Ramsey years and years ago, I have an emergency fund and I have money to pay for the crown. It's not causing a financial crisis to me. And brothers and sisters, by the time I got back home, I was praising God. There is something for us to learn in this no complaint challenge. So one more week, I pray that it's going well for you. Our scripture today is Luke chapter 19 verses 1 through 10. Uh, we'll pause here and allow you to read that. So really, I, I mean pause the video and read the scripture, Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. I shouldn't have to do everything for you. Now let's pray. God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of snow um, that has seemed like such a problem for many of us this week and has seemed like such a opportunity, a chance for a break, a chance for rest, a chance for play for others. And Lord, we pray that even as we are apart from each other today, that your spirit might knit us together. Um, I pray, Lord, that in the next few minutes that I might decrease in this place in order that Jesus Christ might increase. And I pray, Lord, that my words would be your words. And God, as always, we humbly ask that you would open our ears, open our minds, most, Father God, open our hearts so that the words that you have for us this day might be more for us than simply more information. 
For we pray, God, that your words would transform our hearts and our lives. And all this we ask in Jesus' name, saying, Amen. There was a singer several years ago. Uh, he's still around. His name's Randy Newman. Uh, Randy wrote a song years ago that kind of went like this. Short people got no reason. Short people got nobody. And it was really intended to be a satire uh, uh, about how we make fun, how we categorize people, how we put people into stereotypical groups. But it turned out that some people, particularly short people, didn't think it was funny uh, that Mr. Newman didn't really have a sense of humor at all by singing short people. And it took a while for Randy to redeem himself, but he did such when he wrote, You've Got a Friend in Me, from the Toy Story movies. So, Randy Newman did redeem himself. The truth is, it's probably not a whole lot of fun being short. You think? I'm not sure. I've never been short. I've never been tall either. So, I'm not sure what it's like to be short. What I do know that is in the scripture today, which is about the man Zacchaeus, he was a short person in a time in history when the average Jewish male was probably about 5'6". So that means that in our times, Zacchaeus probably would have been a really, really short person. Jesus is in Jericho. And he sees Zacchaeus up in a tree. And despite the fact that Zacchaeus is a tax collector, Jesus calls him and says, I'm coming to your house today. I'm coming to eat with you. Now, we can't overemphasize how horrified, absolutely positively horrified, the people of Jericho would be to know that the name that has lasted for over 2,000 years from their city was the name of Zacchaeus because he was hated. He was a tax collector. Uh, he was working for the Roman IRS, not the Jewish IRS, which made him uh, uh, an accomplice to the hated Roman occupying government. Most of the tax collectors were also cheaters. Uh, as they collected the tax, they skimmed some off for themselves. They collected a little extra. People had to pay it because if you didn't, the tax collector might say, well, this person did pay it all, and then you'd answer to the Romans. So there's a lot of consternation among the people about what Jesus has done because Jesus obviously doesn't understand how evil how bad, how wrong, how hated that Zacchaeus was. Now, I think the gospel writer of Luke is trying to get us to take a serious look at our own prejudices, our own stereotypes, our own ways that we say this person is okay, this person is not, particularly when we say as a community of faith, this person is welcome and this person is not. This person is in and this person is out. This person we'll reach out to. This person or these people we will not. Because something remarkable happens to Zacchaeus in this story. As he has supper with Jesus, he decides that his life is in a big mess. He decides that maybe being a tax collector and cheating everybody is not the best way to go. So publicly, at this dinner, he announces that he, if he's cheated anybody, he will pay them back fourfold. I can only imagine the people that were around the table who probably did the eye roll probably said to themselves, sure, sure he will. He's an evil guy. But Jesus recognized that something changed in Zacchaeus. Something important had changed in him. He was lost. 
and then he was found. So Jesus announces that today salvation has come to this house, to Zacchaeus' house. Salvation had come to this person. What an amazing story to go from today, I'm going to eat lunch with you, to today salvation has come to your house. But the most telling verse of this passage has to be the last verse, when Jesus says, the Son of Man came to seek and save that which is lost. And it makes me wonder, brothers and sisters, it makes me think, who are the lost around us? Who are those who you and I would rather not deal with, the ones that we don't like, the ones that we'd rather not see, the ones that we perhaps think aren't, aren't good enough? Are we willing to be people who reach out, who offer grace no matter what? Because it seems to me that that's what the story is about. The story is about grace. It's about God's grace being offered to someone who needed it the most. And not to put too fine a point on it, but it seems to me that a lot of times we in the church like to tell people, you get your life straightened out, you start to make better choices, you get your life turned around, and we'll welcome you with open arms. When the truth is, as the scripture says over and over again, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us are sinners. All of us have fallen short. All of us have made mistakes. And I think that the key to what this story is trying to tell us is that we should be people who offer grace first. Hardly ever does somebody repent and then they're offered grace. In most of all the stories of Jesus, people are offered grace through Jesus, by Jesus, in Jesus, and the grace that they are offered causes them to repent. And of course, this means that we might have to accept some people who are in lifestyles, who, who are doing things that we may or may not agree with. But we need to be careful that we're not trying to pull the speck out of somebody else's eye when we have a log in our own. We must be very careful that we aren't people who wait for repentance before we offer grace. John Wesley called that prevenient grace. He called it the grace of God that's always working in someone's life, no matter what, whether they've made a decision for Christ or not. Prevenient grace is the grace that woos us towards God. It's the grace that, that brings us towards God. It's the grace that, that calls us, that reminds us of how much we're loved. And if God can offer prevenient grace, shouldn't we too? Shouldn't we be people of prevenient grace too. So this story of Zacchaeus is a story of somebody who once was walking small but now is walking tall. And of course the flip side of that is that some of the people in this story that thought they were really walking tall turned out to be walking really small. And it's a nice reminder on this cold, snowy, January morning that we are to be people who offer grace. So let us look around for the Zacchaeuses around us. Let us reach out to them and let us remind ourselves maybe we think we're walking tall and we're really walking small. Amen. God bless you all.